Welcome everyone. And thank you again for making the time for this discussion. It is so good to have you with us today. My name is Sandra Martins. I'm the International Business Manager for Nanocomposites. I'm delighted to be your host at this webinar where we will provide information about our lateral flow visibility through manufacturing services. And our speaker today is Andre Alfaro, our Director of SA Development. AJ, if you could please introduce yourself. Let's see. Hey, uh, hello everyone and good evening, I think, or afternoon to most people. Uh, bear with me, I'm only on half a cup of coffee right now, so I'm not my normal energetic self, so um, <clears throat> bear with me. Um, so really, um, my background has been in in diagnostics for the past about 15 years now. Um, my, my work in school was with nanomaterial as delivery systems for cancer vaccines, which segued very nicely to uh, diagnostic development um, in the private sector, uh, starting back in 2008, um, which really led to um, multiple um, FDA and CE marked products that really brought me to my journey here to nanocomposites to start uh, building out the infrastructure for uh, really one of the largest and more successful CROs in uh, lateral flow diagnostics in the U.S. Um, and with that, I'm going to jump in and talk about um, nanocomposites, but I'm going to take over the screen here. Let's see. All right. I'm getting better at virtual meetings, so if this isn't right... Um, perfect. So, uh, what is nanocomposites? So, nanocomposites um, really is broken up into two arms of our company. There's our product side, which is really the backbone of the company. Uh, this started back in 2004 uh, out of our president's garage, uh, really with an expertise in uh, nanomaterial and inorganic chemistry. What this did after 15 years. Uh, is really drove the service side, uh, which is really kind of the applications uh, and customer support uh, directly from our products. So our products really specifically in the life science sector, that's your traditional you know, gold colloid, your 40 nanometer gold, your 80 nanometer gold. Uh, and then we started innovating a little bit more uh, to meet more of the requirements for visual detection, but high sensitivity. And those two things usually never went hand in hand because we had options like latex or europium. Fluorescent chemistry uh, always seemed to be the solution to high sensitivity. Um, however, we didn't think that was necessary. So we, we knew um, the, pla the plasmonics of gold colloids, and we have a lot of very talented chemists that developed uh, really properties of large gold with lower densities, so they functionally do better on lateral flow. And that's our gold nanoshells. Really, it's a silica core, so it's nice and light with a gold shell. So optical properties, uh, a very large gold, but again, um, running properties um, for the strip functionally uh, a small gold. Um, and really, we built a we built a service sector around that. So now we wanted to make sure if we're going to sell, if we're going to sell gold. Uh, and materials into life science. We wanted to make sure we can help our clients throughout the spectrum of development from um, early concepts and marker discovery. We do that for clients. We do high throughput marker discovery with um, Luminex and MSD uh, platforms to really increase the overall turnout for marker discovery. So we have that option to help people. Um, we have custom services from for acid development all the way through from, from just you know, looking at commercial antibodies, developing antibodies with our subcontractors, integrating those into platforms, transferring those into manufacturing and getting those to distributors uh, and everything on that line we do. So I'm going to get into the details now of really what those products are um, and, and those services to support them. So um, really, again, the background of this company, really the backbone is the chemist and biochemist we have. So 
we make everything in house, which is great because when you work with us, you're owning one part of your critical reagents for your test. And what we did is ensure that we not only make and characterize the best nanomaterial out there for, for diagnostics, we could actually sell it for less than everyone else because we focused on not small reactions, but really big reactions. So we do, we don't make, you know, a liter of gold. We make a hundred liters of gold in one go. Uh, and really development of that process has been the focus of uh, our manufacturing team uh, for quite a while now, because we wanted to hit both needs. We know what the pain points are for diagnostics. Usually it's time and money or uh, <laughs> and sensitivity uh, for anyone who's developed a lot of assays. Uh, those are really the three biggest concerns, uh, at least from the nanomaterial side. And we want to make sure we covered all of our bases there. So, um, and that's really what, what we did. So we offer not only our standard offerings, but we can also customize anything for different applications. Uh, and I'm, I'm not, my background's not in organic chemistry, so you can't ask me how to use a silver nano cube and what the applications are, but they are quite amazing. Um, and the different polarities make it a very interesting model for uh, light. Uh, so it is, uh, it is pretty exciting to be here because I, I really do think I have the most exciting job because I'm the bridge between these really interesting uh, nanomaterials and the application arm. And that's where my department, when I, where I come in, is to help customers use our material and develop successful commercial products. So the first thing I wanna talk about for the service is, uh, cause like I said, we're full spectrum. I don't wanna just develop your assay. I can do that, but I also wanna help you any stage. Are you looking for someone to scale up your current conjugation to make it co more cost effective and lower your COGS? Uh, we could do that. Do you need custom nanomaterials? Something not working quite right. You know, you, you're doing a ring resonance and instead of 40 nanometer gold, you'd really like 20 nanometer silver because that works better for your system. We can do that. And not only can we do that uh, and make that at small scale, again, we want to make sure we can offer that at the larger scale because we're more, we're more geared toward end game, which is that commercial success side. So, uh, for nanomaterials or conjugates, we do semi-custom and custom uh, fabrications as well as scale-up. So you can see kind of the scale we're talking about. We're usually doing 50 liter drums uh, like you're seeing there. And then and that's not, if you're not, if you're more interested in more than just the nanomaterial and custom work to support existing products or new products, we can develop your assay for you. So again, from start to finish from marker discovery all the way to high throughput manufacturing, we got you covered. So what, as a CRO, I'm always asked like, you know, what, what makes you different? And, they, and I tell people, well, the first thing you should do is, is talk to other CROs in this space. Cause you'll, you'll notice very quickly that we're, that we're different. You know, we're a science and quality company first. And we're unique in the sense that we're not focused on development. That's not our business model. Uh, we created one of the largest CROs for development um, in the world, mainly not because that's you know what our business is, but we want to support our customers because we're more interested in our products company and our manufacturing side. So my job is not to linger and extend and, and try to occur as much revenue as I can during development. My job is to get you through development and into the market. That's solely my department's ability. We are the bridge between our products is our products and the commercial side. So what, how do we do that? Well, we have these vertically integrated systems where we're making the nanomaterial, we're manufacturing everything on site, um, and, and it really speeds up uh, the ability to produce products. We have a sister antibody company for the other affinity reagents. The only thing we don't do is make the paper-based material, but that's all commodities. So we can get that pretty easily from our vendors and our relationships. Um, so that's the rapid side. And, and it's really because we not only control multiple aspects of a product, um, but we have platforms that we've developed over time to really expedite the early prototyping and feasibility to get you almost to that finish line uh, very quickly. Like our turnaround times, I'll speak to this in a moment. Um, if you have antibodies that we work with a lot of companies that have uh, uh, they have a CLIA lab and they have an ELISA and they, they really want to move to point of care. If you have antibodies, I can get you 
a, a lateral flow test dried down in a cassette one step in as little as two weeks. Um, and that prototype is something you can put in front of your investors, in front of your board, um, because I know how important it is to have something tangible in your hand to show people that what you're talking about is real and it's going to be a commercial success. So, and, and all this is done in our ISO 1345 2016 certified quality system. So this is really important. We not want to, we want to make it fast and expedite that process, but we don't cut corners when it comes to design controls. All of that's built into the systems already. We have an excellent team on the quality side and the document control to really support the speed of my team and how we get things done. Um, it's, it, it's just learning how to ride a bike. The more you're doing it, the faster you can go. And we've been doing this a long time. So we know what we're doing when it comes to making this really design controlled in a system uh, ready for that regulatory submission if it's required. And then experience, you know, this is not something that we're doing and just started doing. We've launched products in the wellness space, infectious disease, uh, environmental testing, bio threat testing, agriculture and GMO has been a huge sector, food safety, drugs of abuse, and veterinary. So we've covered a lot and, and we're excited to cover even more. So we, we know the different sectors, we know the different matrices, there's nothing that we haven't seen. And what we do is leverage that experience to make the process simple and fast for our customers. And then once all that development's done, we wanted to make sure that we had the option uh, to do the high throughput manufacturing our customers need it. Um, it's important because there's different tiers to, to manufacturing. There's from low throughput, which is um, really what you need for your submissions and early launch marketing material. That's the 2000, we call that less than, less than 10,000. Uh, and we do do that. that that's card-based manufacturing. We can do that. Uh, it's not as cost-effective as using automation because usually in small volumes, um, you're doing strictly card-based manufacturing, not on reels. Uh, but we wanted to go and make sure we can go, you know, from 2,500 to 25 million. And that's what we did. So we built out a manufacturing facility. We purchased all the automation equipment to ensure that we could provide the lowest cost point for lateral flow diagnostics in the US. And we've, we've successfully achieved that uh, with a great operations and facilities team, a great manufacturing team. Um, it's again, these are one of those things when, when we wanted to make sure we had all the options on the table for our customers. We wanted to have those vertical integrations that you don't have to transfer it uh, to another CMO to do everything we can do in house. And it makes those handoffs really easy. So. We do all of that again here in San Diego. And, and this is the last but not least, and, and everyone's really curious, what are the stages of development? How long do these things take? And, and I'm really going to touch on this uh, here for a second. So it's important to me uh, that we do not take an overcommit to a project. I don't want to take people's money without understanding that I can deliver what I'm saying I can deliver. So a lot of companies go straight into stage two here, which is, which is uh, product development um, or process development. We're really, we're developing the whole platform of your test, you know, your consumables, your test kit, your test strip, it's cassette, any customization of a reader and all, all of that, that's in stage two. That's a, really, that's a really long and expensive process or can be. We want to make sure we de-risk that for our customers. And, and, and I think it's good for both us and our customers that we're not, one, we're not, you're not paying for anything that we can't, that can't be made. And we're not committing to something that can't be made. And that's really what stage one is here. I want to deliver you a functional prototype for your test to demonstrate feasibility and as, as quickly as two weeks. Um, traditionally, if I'm doing antibody or commercial antibody, investigation that's four weeks if you have antibodies you want to screen yourself that's two weeks uh, and really at the end of that i'm going to hand you not only the documentation for what we did we give you all the recipes there's there's no black box at nanocomposites as someone who used cro's i got really tired of not knowing what was happening behind the scenes we make this process completely transparent to our customers you have access to all of the all of the batch records and preparation, all that secret sauce of how these things are done, that's yours. You get that when you work with us. Um, 
and then at the end of this the scoping um and and depending on the, the duration here half a half a month to four months is really sometimes i get asked to do um triplexes or three or four assays that takes a little bit of time to organize that many assays together and show that they can work well together but if it's just single marker as early as two weeks I give you that, I give you all the documentations, I give you functional prototypes that you can put again in front of your board and VCs, and it's, and you're off and running. At that point, I use that data and I'll use that experience to really help develop a, a, a really detailed development plan for stage two. So anyone who's done asset development before knows you don't start a stage two without a plan. The problem is if you don't know a lot about the product already, it's kind of hard to develop a really detailed plan. You don't know what antibodies are gonna work, what your sensitivity is gonna be like. Can you achieve those design inputs that you, you wrote down for your specifications? That is really what stage two is all about. And to make that plan more clear, to really identify the risk and get ready to truncate that process, we do that stage one. Um, and then stage three, at the end of that, that's really where I'm handing it off. I've shown and done my benchmarking to show that all my design outputs meet my design inputs. It's all been done in the quality system. I'm ready to freeze my design and transfer it to manufacturing for scale up and automation. That's stage three. And that really depends on the complexity of the transfer. Uh, but really it's done in about um, two to six months. For most of our COVID assays, uh, those were done in about two months to really get that all the way from making a thousand strips to making 25 million. Um, now, well, it's, that's how quickly it can go. It can be done in two months. So um, that's stage three. That's where you get your DMR created, your batch records, you finalized everything. You produced your three pilot lots. That's commercial equivalent material or production equivalent material. And that can actually be sold. Most of that material is used for clinical validations and verification. Uh, and then you're in the stage four. And this is where all opening champagne and celebrating because we're in GMP manufacturing where there's consistently producing products for you, getting it to your distributors, and you guys are all making money hand over fist. That is the goal of all of it. So uh, on that note, um, I think that's all I have. So I'm gonna kick it back now to Sandra as I drink more coffee and answer questions. Thank you so much, AJ. Appreciate it. And thank you all so much for attending this webinar today. Please use the chat feature to ask uh, any question that you may have. Uh, and as a next step, I would like to suggest that you contact your local distributor to set up a call with us to discuss your application. I would also like to mention that we are offering a 10% discount on lateral flow services uh, orders placed during the months of June and July to su in support of this webinar. So now let me look to see if we have any questions. All right, uh, here's uh, the first one. What does nanocomposites do to mitigate assay risk? AJ. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, it's a great question. I get asked that a lot. Um, it is difficult without knowing the specifics of what risk you need mitigated because again, anyone who's done this before tells you almost every stage has risk and, 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 different, and different components. It could be suppliers, it could be design outputs, it could be clinical setup. There's a lot of different process uh, to a product development cycle, all of which involve risk and how to mitigate that. And the only way you do that really is with experience, experience and uh, knowing where those risks are ahead of time so you can plan to get around them. And that's really what that development plan is supposed to do is after you do the rapid prototyping, you sit there, you look at where your assay stands, you look at where you wanna be and you identify all the risks as part of that. And there is a risk analysis as part of that process. And again, um, if you have any specific questions on, on where you want, uh, where you're thinking of those risks are, I'm more than ha happy to talk at length about that. All right, thanks, AJ. Next question is, I have a large project which will end uh, with the need to manufacture strips. What scale is nanocomposites currently manufacturing test strips? Um, yeah, it's another good question. So manufacturing right now, again, we do a low throughput to high throughput. So if you just need a thousand, two thousand strips for verification, validation, 
marketing material, early launch, we can do that. Or we can also do 25 million. So you tell us what you need and we'll meet that need. And if you need 50 million, we could probably have another conversation about how we can supply that. So uh, there's not much we can't do on the manufacturing. Once you have the training and the equipment, then it, the scale is not, the, in terms of the number of strips, you usually can meet any need. Terrific, thank you, AJ. All right, next question is, what is the scope of your involvement with clients? Only paid for services or also partnerships? Yeah, um, so we, we do a little bit of both. So um, we've, we've always had the opportunity um, to invest in particular projects if that did come up. Uh, but really, we're a paid for service company now. Really, the, the labor has and the, and, and the pipeline for projects and team, uh, we're quite busy on the paid contracts. If there is something very interesting, um, then there's definitely an opportunity that we have done more of an aggressive investment arm, uh, but not as common anymore. Thank you. Uh, one more. Does the 10% discount uh, count for any lateral flow service? I would say yes. It sure does. All right. Uh, one more question. Can you quickly summarize the essay development process at Nanocomposites for me again? Yeah. Um, so four stages, um, starting with a rapid prototyping in stage one. Um, which then use it, is used to develop a plan for stage two, which is your general development where you're doing integration of all your components, you're developing your test system, you're doing box artwork and custom foils, reader integration, all of that combined. That's, uh, that's stage two at the end of which we do a, a pre-verification against your, uh, to ensure that your design inputs are met to your outputs. That's the end of stage two. Stage three is when we're transferring to manufacturing, really getting our manufacturing team in. We develop the DMR, your proof of supplier list, your product specification, your technical DDS, all of that stage three. And then stage four, we're just manufacturing on a schedule. So that, that's the four stages. Thank you, AJ. One last question here. What does a typical lateral flow optimization look like? presuming binding molecules are provided. How many different gold formats, concentration ranges, buffer testing, et cetera? Yeah, tons. I mean, there, there's a lot that goes into optimization. So we always start with um, kind of our best mode. You don't want to start from scratch. You want to see if you can leverage some of that uh, prior experience to speed up that development because all of that's important in conjugation. So. Uh, for passive conjugation, your antibody loading, your pH, uh, your, your um, storage buffer, all of that's important for the success of the conjugate. And it's really antibody specific. For covalent conjugation, just the same. Same with spin conditions, all of that. Um, so to answer your question, uh, there's a lot of different formats. So we, we traditionally use our, our portfolio of life science nanomaterials. So that's a 40 nanometer 80 nanometer, 150 nanometer gold, and you tailor it based on your sensitivity needs. So whatever your assay needs in terms of sensitivity, we'll pick a particle uh, that lines up with it. And if you need fluorescence, we have fluorescence as well. We can help you there. Um, so the first thing we do is look at a project, identify the right solution for the nanomaterial, and then put it into a, a, our traditional format for conjugation that we've shown to be uh, applicable to most antibodies. And then we go into one step farther if we need to improve sensitivity, reduce non-specific binding. That's when we get into the screenings for, you know, buffer formulations, uh, spin conditions, spin speeds, antibody loading, blockers, quenching, all of that. A follow-up question there. Do you offer SPR BioCore service? Oh, I wish we did. Um, I, I love those systems and I use them before they're great for evaluating different antibodies. Um, we don't do that here, unfortunately. We do do analytical chemistry and a lot of it. So we have anything from mass spec to uh, a TEM and SEM microscopes. Uh, we do a lot of fun characterization. Unfortunately, uh, we don't have the, the biocore systems, but um, 
I'm I'm currently begging my president to buy me one because they're expensive, but they're very useful. Um, one more question. What sensitivities can you typically reach compared to standard tests and give some examples? Yeah, it, it, it's, it's pretty comparable uh, and, and can exceed that of your traditional high sensitivity marker that's always been latex. So people have used latex for a long time because you can load it with dye. So per binding event, you can get a nice fluorescent signal uh, as a form of enhancement. Our nano shells um, have shown on multiple occasions, for example, troponin I, to get into the single digits uh, for picograms just based on visual detection. And when you go visual, then you don't necessarily need a reader if you need if it's qualitative. So that reduces a lot of engineering costs. Anyone who's developed a reader knows if you're building it from scratch, you're looking at a million dollars. If you're customizing a current reader, and uh, then you're still looking at kind of a, a quite a hefty fee of somewhere between 200 and 500,000. There are some good off the shelf readers that we do use uh, that are both useful for fluorescent and visual. Um, so there's definitely some recommendations there. You know, my job is basically like a, a contractor when you build your house. If I can't do it myself, I'll go hire the plumber or the electrician to help you build that house. And sometimes it's an engineering firm and whatnot. But in terms of sensitivity, um, Nano shells are kind of our secret weapon for high sensitivity. So we use that whenever I need to go into low picograms, I'll use those and I'll compare that to, to latex and europium to ensure that there's nothing I'm missing there. But traditionally, I try to use visual detection because it's low, it's lower cost. So the cogs are lower and your, your ability to launch at a lower price point is, is better. All right, terrific. And with that, we are ending this webinar. Thank you so much for making the time this uh, today. And Sage, thank you so much for always doing such a great job at putting all this together. Have a nice rest of your day, y'all.